Okay, so now that we have three-dimensional surfaces and those new coordinate systems, we can go back to parametric equations and add a bit to it. So we've already talked about parametric equations of curves. And remember that a parametric equation is a different way to describe a curve. So it describes a curve with some sort of an x equals, a y equals. If that curve is in three-dimensional space, it's got a z equals. And if it's a curve, it has one variable. All right, so here's an example. So we could just take the, let's just take the circle, x squared plus y squared equals four, really simple circle. We know this looks like just a circle, right? Here's our graph, it's just a circle with a radius of two. And we could describe this differently, it's just, it's a different way to describe it with an x equals a y equals, since we have a circle, polar coordinates works very well for this. The radius is two, recall from the last video that x is equal to r, so that would be two, and then cosine of theta, and y is equal to two, and then sine of theta. And if we're doing a full circle, theta is gonna go from zero to two pi. Now, what this describes is a particle that starts on the positive x-axis, and as theta gets bigger and bigger here, the particle moves. So it's this, it's this red dot, and it moves, and it moves all the way, there's pi, there's two pi. So it's a particle that moves around the circle, and parametric equations give us that motion. Now, if we want to, I want to add on to this. So I want to kind of take this same example, and I want to take x squared plus y squared equals 4. But what if now, what if now we want to actually take that circle, let's take that exact same circle, 2, x, y, but let's, let's put it hanging in space. Let's put that circle where z is equal to one, this ring that's just kind of hanging, hanging in air up in space. So we want to describe the motion of the particle, again, around this circle. So we can do that again with that two cosine theta and, and that y is gonna be two sine of theta. But now we've got this hanging in air. We're going to say that we're going to place it where z is equal to 1. What I've used right now are those cylindrical coordinate system. I now have a z in there. I now have a three-dimensional system. Notice that I only have thetas in here because this is a curve. Um, and I want to put bounds on this. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Always include bounds. These bounds are going to be what we integrate over later. So it's important to think about them. They're going to be the bounds of our integrals. All right. So now I want to move on from this example again and do a little bit of a different one. What if we now want to describe not just around the circle, but what if we want to describe a, a whole like a, a piece of paper that's been cut into a circle? So this is, this is now a surface. What's different is that we're now gonna need, we're gonna have to have two variables in here. Because a surface is two-dimensional, because we do, we'd need two variables in to describe this surface. So once again, with parametric equations, we're gonna use an x equals and we're gonna use a y equals, and this is three-dimensional, so we're gonna need a z, but we need two variables in there. So here's how this is different, very subtly different. That circle there, that blue circle, it's all filled in, still hanging out, it's equals one. That doesn't change. 
what's going to change is that instead of x being 2, instead of us being always with a radius of 2, we want to hit every radius possible within that circle. So we want x to be our cosine of theta, and we want y to be our sine of theta. And if we want to hit only what's in that circle, now let's restrict r so that it goes from 0, but it's going to stop at 2. And that gives us, that fills in this whole circle with the radius starting at 0 and ending at 2, fills it all in for us. Radiuses are never negative. Where we get this side of it is not with a negative radius, it's with theta, so we also need to define theta as being the full circle so that we can take all the radiuses from 0 to 2 and rotate them a full 2 pi angle so that we fill in that entire circle. Now we have a surface. It has two variables versus one variable for the curve. Um, let's, let's do another, let's do one more example here. Let's um, find the parameterization for, let's do a paraboloid, x, z equals x squared plus y squared. So remember that this is that kind of bowl looking shape. We're just going to describe this in a, in a different way. Parametric equations. Every time you hear parametric equations, I want you to think of writing out an x equals, a y equals, a z equals, and then we're going to have bounds. Now, this is now a surface. So because it is a surface, whoops, because it is a surface, we want two variables. So whatever we have in here, whatever we have for those x equals y equals and z equals, we want two variables. Now there's two different ways we can do this. So here's a really simple one. x is x. Oops, I want a black in there. x is x, y is y, and z is x squared plus y squared. It works. It's very simple. Two different variables, x and y. We have a parameterization because we've got an x equals, a y equals, and a z equals. Um, and we can define x would then be everything and y would then be everything. And that would be it. So that's kind of, that's one, one way we can do this. A little bit more of a sophisticated and a more useful way to do this would be to use those polar coordinates again. So x would be r cosine theta. Notice that nothing has changed there. y would be r sine of theta. Nothing has changed there. I have two different variables. So now what I need is z. I need this z in terms of r and or theta. And if you, if you take a look at this, I've got x squared plus y squared, and in polar coordinates, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So z is going to be r squared. That's z. And I need bounds. Now, this bowl is an infinite thing. I know I have to cut it at some point so that it makes it look like an actual thing instead of just a parabola on the piece of paper. Um, and so with this, my radius, radius would go from zero to infinity. Remember that radiuses are ne never negative, so I don't want to just say it's in the reals because it, it, we're not going to have negative radii. And theta, I can restrict from zero to two pi because that still gives me the full circle. If I 
if I said that theta was in the reals, then what would happen there is that we would go around and around and around this paraboloid and define it actually infinitely many times because we would just keep circling around that surface. So with theta being restricted from zero to two pi, that gives us once around with the radius as being everything. So this is the more appropriate way to parametize this surface. We will talk a lot more about parametrizations of surfaces later in the semester, but I wanted to introduce it because um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, um, and I want to start getting you used to parametrizing surfaces. Um, and so I think that's it for now. Um,